Hey, Rita, are you there? I have something extremely important to talk to you about. Is now a good time? Good evening, Victoria. Is this about my husband, Bartholomew, by any chance? Huh? He's at your house right now, right? Or rather, you pretty much abducted him and dragged him there in broad daylight. Um, you've got some serious nerve to get involved with the husband of one of your mom's friends. You were plotting to get your claws into my husband while chatting to me with your phony friendliness outside the kindergarten this whole time, weren't you? Ah, I see. So, basically, you already know about mine and Bartholomew's passionate and undying love for each other? Passionate and undying love? I think you mean your act of shameless betrayal and infidelity. Hearing you try to paint something so base and disgusting as something beautiful and pure is super creepy and genuinely makes me want to vomit. So I'd appreciate if you could refrain from doing that. At least while talking to me. Are we clear? Great. Oh my god, you're horrible. I can't believe you're profane our love with your bitter, hateful words. Just because you're Bartholomew's wife doesn't give you license to say whatever you want to me, you know. You might be upset with me, but I'm still a human being. I'll never forgive you for this. Why the hell would I care if you forgive me or not? Give me a break. No matter how much you dress up your words, no matter how harmless and innocent you try to make what you're doing sound, the bottom line is that you're engaged in an affair with a married man, and you should be ashamed with yourself. You're nothing but a cheap, two-bit cheater. You can say what you like, but you can't deny the fact that you're a dirty, low-life scumbag with no morals. It's only normal you'd be upset after what happened, Rita. But you should know that me and Bartholomew are very, very serious about each other. It's just like they say, you don't choose who you catch feelings for, right? For all I care, you can get so angry and worked up that you turn bright red and steam starts coming out of your ears. But will it change anything? No. Me and your husband fell for each other, and that's that. Whatever. Will you at least send him back here to me for now? We can't discuss where we go from here if he's hanging around your place all day. <laughs> Does that mean you're going to discuss divorce with him? Yippee! Now hold your horses, Victoria. First of all, whether we divorce or not depends on how Bartholomew responds to the cat being dragged out of the bag. Besides, we have our daughter to think about, too. Woohoo! So it's decided, then. Divorce, divorce, divorce. Yay! Yeah! If thinking that makes you happy, then be my guest, sweetie. Anyway, will you send him back now? And we'll be stuck in a stalemate forever if you don't. I suppose you do have a point. Okay, I think I can just about tolerate not being with my stallion for a little while, if it means getting him all to myself for eternity afterwards. Just don't go forgetting Bartholomew's heart belongs to me. Me and only me. Rita, do you have any idea how lonely I was all alone without my Bartholomew last night? I very kindly let you have him back for a little while. So I think you at least owe it to me to get these discussions out of the way promptly so I can have him back as soon as possible. It might be a bitter pill to swallow, but it's about time you accepted the fact he no longer has any feelings for you whatsoever and his heart belongs to me now. If you do anything to tear us apart, I'll never forgive you. Bartholomew, where the hell are you? Can we just stop this crap already? I get that you got scared and escaped in a panic when you heard I found out about the affair. But this has been dragging on for way too long now. It's been four damn days already. How long do you intend on playing these stupid games for? Victoria said you're not at her place. You do know that you'll still be paying me for compensation whether we divorce or not, right? There's no way you're getting off the hook here, so why not just be a man about it and face the consequences of your actions? If you keep running away and ignoring me, 
I'll get my lawyer to charge you for even more compensation. Is that what you want? No, please. Gah, just give me a break already, woman. Wow, you finally replied. So you are still alive. Well, where are you right now? Uh, well... I'm staying in a business hotel near the station by 5th Street. Wow, have you been staying there these whole last three days? It, yes. And who's paying for your stay? Um, you are. For God's sake, Bartholomew, you're unreal. Don't think you're getting any freebies out of me. I'll be adding every cent of what you spent on my credit card into the compensation. No, please don't do that. I'm already struggling enough as it is. Oh my God. If you're so worried about the compensation, I suggest you don't want anyone with half a brain would do. And hurry the heck up and get your ass back home, now. Rita, I... Save it. I don't want to hear it here. You can say anything you need to say to me when you come home. I want you back at this house within the hour. Do I make myself clear? Uh, okay. Victoria, there's something I need to confirm with you. Oh well. Would you look at who it is? Do you have some good news for me, sweetie? Have you finally decided to divorce? To be honest, that is most likely the direction things will be moving in. But before we discuss that, I've been doing a little independent investigation. You know, about yours and my husband's relationship. There are a few things that just didn't sit right with me after he confessed everything. To be more specific, I've been doing some digging about you, Victoria. I'd like to make sure there are no contradictions or discrepancies between what you tell me and what I found out. Would you mind answering some questions for me over messages while I take note? Sure thing, sweetie. Knock yourself out. Where shall we start? First of all, I found out that you have a husband, and he's currently out of state on a temporary work placement. You're still not divorced, are you? Huh? Well, yes. That's right. But don't worry. I intend on divorcing him as soon as me and Bartholomew get the go-ahead to tie the knot. How long have you been seeing my husband? Mm, I think it's been around a half a year now. That's when Bartholomew started dropping off and collecting your daughter from kindergarten, right? It was around that time that we started running into each other. And before we knew it, we'd fallen madly in love with one another. It didn't just stop at kindergarten, did it? I know he was visiting your house from pretty early on, too. Where was your son when my husband was there? I left him with my parents. They live on 6th Street and love watching over little Tommy. You see, my mother-in-law has always been a hard-faced old bat with me, but she spoils Tommy like it's no one's business. She's probably lonely with her son being out of state for work. Because she always jumps at the opportunity whenever I ask her to babysit. I almost feel like I'm the one doing her the favor. She's been a lifesaver when it comes to arranging steamy fun time with your husband. <laughs> I guess I'm at least relieved you haven't been exposing your son to your depraved behavior. Every cloud has a silver lining and all that. But I can't help but feel bad for your mother-in-law. Huh? Why on earth? She doesn't need your sympathy. Why not? You're using her as a tool to enable an affair with another woman's husband. Don't be ridiculous, Rita. It wasn't like that at all. Actually, I planned this out so that everyone would benefit in the end. Listen to me. Everything I've done has been carefully contrived to ensure that when I marry Bartholomew and divorce my husband, he gets full custody of Tommy. Think about it. I never have to worry about looking after him again, and the boy gets to be with his favorite side of the family. Everyone wins. It might seem strange to you, but this is my way of showing Tommy I love him. That's so messed up. I don't even know where to start. So it's fair to say you plan on fully abandoning your custodial rights to your son then? Yes, exactly. Me and Bartholomew plan on having lots of children of our own one day. The last thing I need is a leftover kid from my last marriage getting in the way of our happiness, you know? I see. All right, I understood. Thank you for your honesty. There don't seem to be any contradictions here. 
I told you, didn't I? Me and Bartholomew are in love, and that's all there is to it. In his eyes, I see the stars above. My heart beats for him, my dearest dove. Oh, I can't wait for us to start our new lives together. You can keep your creepy, vomit-inducing love poems to yourself, things. To be honest, I could care less about how you feel for each other. The only reason we're having this conversation is so we can reach a settlement on the affair and I can put all this crap behind me. Oh, stop it, Rita. Why do you have to be so salty and bitter about all this? I'm trying to work with you on here. There are no hard feelings, you know. He just chose me over you. That's all. I don't see why there's any need for all this hostility. Me and Bartholomew are... I don't want to hear it. We'll never agree on this, but let's just agree to disagree and save ourselves a bunch of unnecessary trouble. To be honest, you're kind of annoying. And you're a big, horrible meanie. Anyway, you'll be receiving a visit from my lawyer over the coming days. Huh? Your lawyer? Yep, my lawyer. I figured it'd make more sense to leave the compensation to a professional, even if it is going to be a little costly. In the end, I can take his fees out of the compensation anyway. I suppose that makes sense. In any case, I'm not worried about the compensation. I have a feeling that a certain someone will take care of it all, my share included. I think you probably know who I mean. <laughs> Is that so? Interesting. Anyway, I just had that certain someone sign the divorce papers and booted him out of the house. Huh? Wait a sec. What? It's your turn to take him in now. Good luck. Hang on. I don't even... Wait. Surely you should be the one being booted out. Of my own house? Don't be ridiculous. The house belongs to you? Hmm. I see. Actually, you know what? It's fine. Whatever. Bartholomew will be mine forever and ever from here on out. So what do I care if we have to let go of a poxy little house? <laughs> Goodbye, Victoria. Hey, Rita. Thanks a bunch for finally divorcing my man. You're a star. But Tholomew just got done paying my share of the compensation. Not only that, but he also agreed to pay child support for Tommy when my ex-husband won full custody of him. In just 100 days' time, me and my hunky stallion will be officially married. Oh, I can't wait! Rita, I finally got my knight in shining armor. This is every girl's dream. Toodle, sweetie pie. Hello, Victoria. I have the most amazing news. Me and Bartholomew officially got married today. Sure, we might have been officially together for a whole three months now. But I must say, there's something truly magical about having that ring on your finger. We're so happy. It's like a dream, a fairy tale. Did you really go out of your way to unblock me just to brag about getting married? That's kind of sad. <laughs> I guess I may as well ask you if this is you unblocking me. What? Oh, this should be good. Go on, sweetie. What is it? What is it? Where are you guys living these days? In the same apartment I've always lived in. My ex-husband took Tommy to live with his parents, so I stayed and carried on living here as normal. Wow, you stayed there? Yep, and this is where things get really good. Now, me and Bartholomew can finally start our married life, full of joy, romance, love, and passion. We both got disowned by our parents and told never to contact them again. But I guess it's a small price to pay for a true love as special as ours. It's kind of romantic when you think about it, right? The love that overcame all adversity. They should make a movie about us. Damn, well, this is awkward. Victoria, there's something you should know. Your ex-husband told me this when they took Tommy to live with his folks after the divorce. But that apartment is being rented in his name. And you have a deadline to be out at the end of this month. Huh? What? Did you change the name on the tenancy or something? The name on the tenancy? Wait a second. I don't think we went through any procedures or anything. I just kind of carried on living here. 
If you don't know the details, wouldn't contacting the landlord and asking him be the intelligent thing to do? You know, since your entire living situation depends on it. Oh no, we have to be out by the end of the month? This just won't do. I have to tell Bartholomew about this, and we need to find somewhere else to live. But really, this is exciting. You know, it's not every day a girl gets to move into a new apartment with her new husband. I know, I'll flutter my eyelashes and get him to buy us one of those new luxury high-rise apartments near 8th Street, with the view overlooking the bay. Sure, go ahead, Pumpkin. You're free to do whatever you like. <laughs> oh, there was one more thing I wanted to mention. What is it? What exactly did you have your sights on when you got your claws into my ex-husband? Huh? No, no, no. It wasn't like that at all. He might make 150 k a year, but that's not important to me. I just wanted to marry my darling so we could be together forever. Huh? 150000 a year? When two people are madly in love like we are, money is insignificant. The fact that he makes 150000 a year is just an added bonus to our love. Or rather, it just so happens that the man I fell for is also filthy, stinking rich. Um, Victoria? I'm the one who makes 150000 a year. What? I did think you seemed a little confused about some things. But I had no idea you'd make a misunderstanding of such epic proportions. Wait a second. What are you talking about? No way! This can't be! You work a regular part-time job, right? How could you possibly make that much money? Sure, I do work part-time on the register at a supermarket. But my family runs a lucrative real estate business with properties extending across the whole country and with offices abroad. I help out with the management of the estate branch. A real estate business? And what's Bartholomew's role at the company? He doesn't have anything to do with it. Not only that, but he's pretty much unemployed right now. Unemployed? The company he'd been working for these last 10 years went bankrupt after a whistleblower blew the lid on some shady borrowing practices 10 months ago. What with the way the world's been going recently, he said he wanted to use his redundancy as an opportunity to get into working from home as a freelancer. The early days were always bound to be rough. Everyone knows it takes time to establish reliable contracts as a freelancer, so I never expected him to start raking in the big bucks immediately. Fortunately, I made more than enough with my real estate work, so support us both. We'd agree he'd increase his share of the housework and looking after our daughter in return for me supporting him while he looked for work. Things went great at first, but then he met you and started having an affair. And to make matters worse, he started using the time he should have been putting towards looking for work to meet up with you in secret. As a result, he continued to contribute precisely nothing to the family finances for several months on end. Oh my god, no way. You mean, Bartholomew still doesn't have a job? I don't know for sure, but surely if he lives with you, you'd know if he was working. Since he's supposed to be working from home and all? Oh my god, but I've never seen him do anything that looks like work. Ugh, this can't be. So what about my share of your compensation? What about the child support payments to my ex-husband? How did he pay for all of that? I have no idea how he came up with the compensation, or how he continues to keep up with the child support payments. But there is one thing I'm confident about. He's up to his ears in debt. Debt? Which is why I have a feeling you guys are going to be in serious trouble if you don't both start working soon. You mean he lied to me about making 150000 a year? I can't categorically state that he was lying. Why not? Just before we divorced, I asked him if you ever asked him about his salary, or whether he ever told you anything about how much money he makes. And sure enough, he told me you asked him how much he brings in per year, just before you started the affair. Yes, that's right. He told me he was making 150000 a year! You see, the figure he gave you was actually his household income. Household income? This was just after he lost his job at the company, and was still trying to get established as a freelancer working from home, which meant he was barely making anything. 
Naturally, he was never going to admit that to you, so he probably felt like he had no chance but to answer with our household income. But that's not important to you, right? You truly love each other, so whether he has money or not is of no importance, right? Oh my god. Your love for him is so pure that you'll accept him regardless of his financial situation, I'm sure. So, not only does he have no money, but he's also unemployed and up to his ears in debt? I can't believe this is happening to me! Good luck with paying off his debt as a couple. No way! This all has to be some kind of sick joke, right? No! I can't believe Victoria actually thought Bartholomew made 150000 a year. It's both tragic and hilarious in equal measure. Something tells me him paying her share of the compensation and covering the child support payments to her ex-husband were instrumental in pulling the wool over her eyes. But later on, after doing some asking around, I found out he got a hold of that money by going into debt with his friend, who was a successful stock market trader. Apparently, Victoria tried to lure his affluent friend into bed when she found out about his riches. But unlike Bartholomew, his friend had a sense of honor and dealt with the shameless gold digger in seconds. Naturally, he told Bartholomew about what his wife had tried to do behind his back, and before long, the two of them got a divorce. Apparently, Bartholomew demanded she pay him back every cent of what he paid to cover her share of the compensation and child support as one of his conditions for the divorce, resulting in Victoria ending up in tens of thousands of dollars in debt. Hilariously, she begged her ex-husband to take her back in desperation, and Bartholomew pleaded with me to give him a second chance. But of course, we both refused. Both of them got disowned by their parents, too. Last I heard, they're both working like dogs while living in run-down, cockroach-invested apartments in soul-crushing isolation to keep up with their debt repayments. Hey, big sis. How's it going? It's Anna. What is it, Anna? It's not like you to message me. What happened? Hey, so get this. I got a job at T-Bank. That's right. The ultra-competitive T-Bank. Not only that, but I'll be working at HQ from day one. Amazing, right? Oh, really? Congrats. We all went out at a luxury French restaurant to celebrate yesterday. Mom bought me a super expensive designer one piece. And Dad bought me a diamond necklace worth over $4,000. As a well done for getting my first proper job. Isn't it amazing? They bought you clothes and accessories again? Don't you already have enough to fill your entire room? Plus, enough to take full occupation of my old room, too? It's all good. We are celebrating, lol. Hey, wait. You're not jealous, are you? Oh, that's right. No one ever celebrated for you like this, huh? <laughs> You are a loser who could only get a job at some pathetic small fry company after all. <laughs> huh? Who's a loser? Well, I mean, you are, right? Lol. You never studied when we were growing up. Went to a third-rate high school, third-rate university, and wasted all your time on stupid stuff. You turned your nose up at every single company mom got you introductions for. Then ended up at a company so third rate. No, fourth rate. That I don't even know what they do. Despite being the oldest daughter, you left home straight away. You're the worst of the worst kind of loser. With no respect for your parents. You're the shame of our family. Oh, why do I need to hear this from you? It's true, my grades back in school weren't exactly amazing. But it's not like I didn't have my own interests. 
and I worked on them in high school and university as much as I could. I only turned down the companies mom got me introductions for because I wanted to land a job on my own merits. And it's not that you don't know what my company does. You just don't understand it. I told you it's a video production company, didn't I? Nothing but excuses, LMAO. This is why mom and dad say you're hard to love. I, unlike you, have had impeccable grades ever since kindergarten. I was the top of my elementary school, junior high, and high school. Got into a good university. And got into the company dad recommended me with flying colors. Mom and dad are always spoiling me because I'm such a wonderful daughter. Yeah, yeah. I've heard it a thousand times already. Mom and Dad said they've got no need for a daughter like you. They said they wished I was their only daughter. They actually looked kind of pleased when you left home, lol. They said we finally get to live with just our real family. <laughs> oh, I see. It means nothing to me after all this time. That you're all awful people isn't exactly news to me. Oh, looks like someone's a little bitter. If you don't fix your attitude soon, you really won't be part of our family anymore. Just the other day, Mom said, maybe we should cut all ties with her. I don't need a pea-brained loser of a big sister like you. So, she's got my vote. You're free to do as you please. I'm hardly gonna come crying to beg. Aww, putting on a brave front, you poor thing. Just make sure you keep sending us money, okay? I mean, of course, it doesn't even amount to a single piece of my clothing. I'm a genius, so I'll be on the higher salary than you before long. So, it's not like we need it. But if you don't show any kind of gratitude to mom and dad, they'll forget you completely exist. I'll carry on sending the money. You don't need to tell me. But make no mistake, the reason I'm sending money is because they gave me an allowance until high school. And it's to pay that back. It's not out of any positive feelings towards any of you. Cool, whatever. Oh, looks like it's time! I'm going out with mom and dad to pick a brand new suit now. Lol. It's a major bank, so I've gotta look the part. Not like your company, which is more just an extension of your hobbies. See ya, sis! It's been a while. It's your mother. Do you have a minute? Mom? Huh. Is it really you or a scammer? A scammer? What? Just a few years after rushing out of the house. And you've already forgotten your mother? No, I know you gave me your line ID. But you haven't messaged me a single time until now. So I just found it a tad suspicious. Anyway, what is it? It's about the money you've been sending. We'd like you to start sending us a little more. What? Why? Well, you see... Anna left T-Bank two months ago. What? Already? Didn't she only just start there? Apparently, her and her boss didn't see eye to eye. And she was given a severe dressing down in front of everyone. Even though all she did was borrow a little money from their safe because she didn't have enough money to go shopping. Come on, surely that's completely unacceptable? That's the worst thing a bank employee could do. If anything, her boss was too kind for not taking it any further than telling her off. But did he really have to make an example of her by doing it in front of everyone? Oh, that poor girl. She was so embarrassed that she punched him. 
It got difficult for her to be there after that. Her hand must have really hurt. The poor thing. Surely this is 100% Anna's fault? Not only did she steal, but to get violence with her boss? You said she left, but by any chance did she get fired? No! I called and told them Anna would no longer be working there. Major Bank or not, I won't have my Anna work anywhere where her boss upsets her. She did look for another job, but no company is willing to give her the time of day, and she didn't get anywhere. Now she said she needs to recuperate because she's upset, and she's always locked in her room. So, um, is she a neat then? Watch what you say! Don't be ridiculous! She's just upset after having a grown man yell at her for the first time. She'll make her return to society when she's done recuperating. Because no matter how you look at it, Anna's a genius. She's not like other people. <sighs> I guess I knew that already. But why does this mean I have to send you more money? You've been able to get by just fine until now without paying any mind to my contributions. Surely nothing would change if I sent you more. According to Anna, the money I send doesn't even amount to a single piece of her clothing, lol. About that, your father collapsed. What? Last week, after he woke up, he collapsed by the side of the bed. He even had a stroke! He's still in the hospital now. He still can't move the right side of his body. It doesn't seem like he'll be able to carry on working. What? This is the first I've heard of it! Why didn't you tell me? Why? We had no reason to tell you. If you came home, you'd just be an inconvenience. What? Why? The point is, your father can't work anymore. It does look like he'll be able to get his pension, and I'm working part-time. But we're still not quite making ends meet. At this rate, we won't be able to buy Anna clothes like we used to. We only ask you to help us until Anna finds another job and our finances become stable again. Please send us more money. Help your darling little sister. Even a half wits like you can do that, right? I'm cutting you out of my life. What? Somehow, I've tolerated you until now, but I've reached my limit. I won't be sending you any more money, and I'll never come back to the house again. You can think of me as no longer existing. What are you saying? You can't stop sending us money! I won't allow it! I was kind enough to bring you into this world and you repay me by going to a below average school and working a subpar job? The least you can do is show some gratitude by sending me money! Look how quickly you are to treat me like an incompetent ingrate. I'm fully independent with a job and a salary. And, as for money, I was sending it. I'm living life with my feet firmly planted on the ground. A little different to Anna who turned into a rotting neat because she thought she was better than the world. After living like a princess with her every whim and desire catered to, why am I the one who's treated like an incompetent fool and forced to play the burden? I don't get up and go to work in the morning so Anna has more money to waste. Don't you think coming begging to me after treating me like a complete moron all these years is just a little bit selfish? Don't be so rude! How dare you speak to your mother like that! You can't call me an idiot. I might not be the most intelligent, but I'm damn sure not stupid enough to blindly obey your absurd requests. 
Requests you make despite not even thinking of me as family. I don't need anyone who treats me like that in my life. What? No! Just wait a moment! Are you being serious about breaking things off? I just said so, didn't I? In fact, wouldn't it be perfect for you? You said you wanted to cut ties with me, right, Mom? I've never even thought of such a thing! Liar. Anna told me. What you said about being with your real family when I moved out. Apparently you were over the moon. No, that's... You've got it all wrong! In any case, you didn't tell me my dad collapsed. You never even asked me if I was okay, have you? Whether I'm around or not makes no difference to you. That's not true! You're my precious daughter! I apologize for everything I've done. It won't happen again. Please forgive me! You're the only person I can rely on now! Once our finances stabilize again, I'll buy you whatever you want! Whether it's clothes, accessories, a car, anything! I'll buy you the same things we buy Anna! Please, just help us! I don't need anything from you. You can think of it as your punishment for raising such a domineering bitch queen of a daughter. But whether you give up or lose everything, or work yourselves to exhaustion desperately trying to scrape a living together, I'm cutting all ties with you. But hey, at least you can get through it as a family. Good luck. Don't say things like that! Emily, please! Oh, did you finally remember my name? I thought you'd forgotten in the few years since I left. Anyway, too little too late. Goodbye, ex-mother. Even after several years had passed, Anna still refused to look for work, even once. Citing being too good to be pushed around by people as her reason. She degenerated into a full-blown neat shut-in, and got addicted to an expensive mobile game. Apparently, she survives by eating through mom's part-time job wages and dad's pension. My dad developed dementia as a result of the stress caused by not being able to move in the right side of his body. And he started getting violent with my mom after she became his carer. My mom's completely exhausted from the stress of working a job she's not used to. Having to care for my dad, and Anna refusing to look for work. They're holding out somehow, or other for the time being. But I think the family will probably end up in complete ruin before long. I blocked Anna and my mom's numbers. And just to be on the safe side, got a new phone and moved into an apartment near work. The apartment's pet friendly, so I adopted a kitten in need of a foster parent from a friend. I'm enjoying a happy, fulfilling life with my beloved cat, while giving it my best at work. If they instilled some discipline into Anna, and not spoiled her so much, they would have probably had happy lives too. Anna and my parents are so pitiable.